The true purpose of a man is to live, not to merely exist. Good day, brothers and sisters. What a glorious day to be alive. And it is the end of the world as we know it. Glenn, how's the song go? It's the end of the world as we know. Is it the end of the world we're experiencing right now? What do you think? Every time they say it's the end of the world, it becomes the beginning of the new world. The old has to end so you can start the new. Well, that's a good point. Uh, what do you think? Did you watch the speech? Did you did you get the highlights? I just got a few highlights. Obviously, I don't speak any of the Slavic languages, so therefore you you have to discern because you put yourself at a bit of a handicap because the the, the um, Russian language is being translated into English, and you don't know if there's a, an agenda involved or if there's a you know something like a problem like that. So it it, it creates a bit of a, a you're at a handicap. Your point of view. So to the audience, we're talking about Putin's speech. And if you live under the rock, that's what happened. It was the highlight of everybody's week. Everybody was expecting to, for him to say something interesting. And, and even Biden trying to overshadow him by going visiting uh, Zelensky in Kiev. Uh, we can talk about that later. But, um, you know, everybody was speculating what Putin's going to say. And he spoke for about two hours. We're not going <laughs> to refer to the whole speech because it's crazy. We're not even have that much attention here. Um, but let's just get straight to the point. Let's listen to what Putin has to say. Power. They have already spent more than $150 billion to supply weapons to the Kiev regime. Just compare, according to the Economic Cooperation and Development Organization, to help the poorest countries in the world, G7 allocated in 2020 and 2021 some $60 billion. Do you see this? They spent 150 for the war in the poorest countries. Allegedly, they are taking care about. They have allocated only 60. And they demand to follow them blindly, those countries who they pay to. And how they can talk about sustainability, about the environmental development. Where has it, has it gone? And they are not stopping this flow of money to support war. And they are spending more money on coup in the other countries all across the world. What do you think? What is he trying to say there? Well, it looks like the, the big boys are playing a three-dimensional game of chess. Uh, a big money game. And I know that like us sending weapons and money to Ukraine... We're complicit in crimes against humanity also. Also, over here, we're going into inflation because this money is being printed into existence and they're sending it over there while it still has value. And the people, the middle class, are paying for it through increased prices, through the devaluation of their currency. This is happening in America too. It's happening in many countries in the world. So you'd have to wonder if this whole thing was being done purposely to try and hide the real problem because all wars are central bank wars. Okay? I believe you got something there. You know, like uh, the whole 9-11 thing, right? They were missing, what, trillions of dollars of the budget, of the military budget, Pentagon budget in the U.S. And then the next day, 9-11 happens <laughs> right after the report. And uh, then they went to Iraq and Afghanistan and, you know, those perpetual wars, they still continue. You know, somehow it's like artificial GDP drive. <laughs> well, it's, let's do, the military is, seems like the only industry that uh, drives the economy of the world nowadays. And, um, you know, a lot of people will now make this, uh, you know, a point that Putin is the aggressor. Uh, Putin is the dictator. He's going into the war, but they're missing the whole big picture. Uh, that has been prepared for a long time that uh, U.S. needed an enemy since, you know, uh, Afghanistan and Iraq was no longer an enemy that we were aware of this. Uh, the terrorist, uh, you know, that spooky, invisible threat, the terrorist, that sort of kind of withered away. I don't know if, Glenn, do you remember 2001 and, you know, the, it's sort of like that fear thing of like, you cannot 
uh, board a plane uh, without a um, <laughs> without being searched, cavity searched, because God forbid you had a plastic knife and you had more than four ounces of whatever the how many ounces of liquid you had to have. And um, now we have an ex uh, example of what happened in the last two, three years uh, with the pandemic and how everybody should be afraid. And now this boogeyman, the Russia and the Putin, you know, it's sort of continuous uh, perpetual fear mongering uh, to control people's minds. Yeah, fear mongering makes it easier to control your population. I wonder how the uh, people in North America here would like if proxy militaries of Russia were encroaching on our land, um, pointing military weapons towards us as after we made agreements with them saying, okay, no no more weapons pointed, no more proliferation of nuclear no arms. No more expansions. No more expansions of uh, NATO and uh, military powers, you know, let's move on to the next level in, in, in humanity. But it seems like the West always reneges on its uh, agreements. So it doesn't look like they're, they're the type of people. The, the, it's the Western globalists. I won't say it's, 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 it's the people of North America, Canada, United States, Mexico, South America. You know, the people don't really know what's going on. It's the puppet governments who work for the globalists, the Western globalist elites, who are trying to defend this world uh, currency system, monetary system, which is a debt-based monetary system. And now we seem to be near the end, and they're trying to cover it up as... They're the ones who caused the problems in the first place. So we're, we're being led to believe it's, it's dictators, it's, it's uh, communists, it's people on the other side of the world. From what I see, it's the Western people, Western globalists using the military, which the citizens pay for, being used to go cause problems and confrontations everywhere else in the world. It's all diversion. Well, if we, if, we, if we go back to the Putin speech, there's one interesting point that he brought up. He said, he did mention, he no longer said it was a, not no longer, but he used it at one point, he didn't, uh, he didn't say it was a special operation. He said it was a war. And it's an important factor is, like if you listen to all the uh, Western media now, and it's like how we need to supply uh, Ukraine, and even the Biden's uh, visit to uh uh, Ukraine yesterday. Uh, we have a clip here from uh, what is it, Communist uh, or Clinton's news network? Is that how, how the Criminal it? News Network, CNN, the Clinton News Network? For, same thing, actually. Uh, okay, let's just let's just watch this for two seconds. Given all of your experience, your reaction to President Biden's commitment this morning to the Ukrainian president to do whatever it takes for as long as it takes. What does that need to mean now uh, in terms of uh, tactical weaponry? Does it need to mean long range missiles? Does it need to mean F-16s for Ukraine to win? Yes, it does. It means all of the above. I mean, this is a great sh show of leadership by President Biden. I mean, good leaders always go to the sound of the guns, mm. go to the front. And I mean, this is significant. But um, the, the, the... All right. <laughs> well, Glenn, <laughs> going to the front. Are they, is this guy, this is a guy, this guy's a retired general, right? This guy's a retired general. Did he just like basically admit it? This is the front of American war. Is that what he's saying? Like the language is important here. And, and he also said that he, you know, Biden did a, a, a real good thing. He's a good leader by going to the front lines. And the front lines of what? Is it, is it official admission that they are in the middle of the war? front lines with his sunglasses on watching him and Zelensky walking the protected streets it's like <clears throat> watching me and mini me together uh, well they did have the sirens and most people say it was fake just to like uh, to create the danger there's also uh, some uh, <laughs> uh, speculation there that uh, there was some kind of negotiations between the Russians and the US please don't shoot the Biden while he's visiting uh, I don't know if that's true or not, but uh, you know, I believe it. Okay, let's just let's just continue watching this for a minute. The United States needs to make a decision: Are we in it to ensure that the Ukrainians simply not lose, mm -hmm. or are, they, are we in it so they can actually win? In order to do that, we've got to be able to surge a lot of equipment forward. They need more aircraft.
Or he's saying, are we in it? He's questioning, are we in it? Of course you're in it. You just said it, are we in it? You know, you, that's why you're asking that question. Are you asking to what extent you're in it? Bro, they're, so, they're in it. What's he doing over there? Like, what, what is he doing? We send $150 billion worth of aid over to Ukraine. So and, this it's it's a proxy war. In other words, it's a cold war, but it's it's a cold war being fought right on the doorstep of Russia. So they have a vested interest to try a, 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 and to eliminate this war as quickly as possible. It made us may have started off as a military operation, but now it's turning into a full scale war. And when you, you you're having the world being divided up in this three dimensional chess game where um, very few winners and most of the people are, are the losers, uh, men, women, and children being killed and maimed and, and, and you know, going to be having all these problems in the future. Let's continue watching this. They need more drones. They need more long-range artillery. And something that hasn't really been discussed much, they need logistics. We've given them a lot of great equipment billions of dollars of equipment that they can't maintain. I've heard anecdotal reports from the theater that perhaps only half of the equipment that we've given them is fully mission capable now. They, they don't have the maintenance training, they don't have the repair parts. And so we got, got to be able to surge that forward, particularly if we want them to actually win. One of, uh, to do that, you have really been advocating for the Biden administration to authorize US contractors into Ukraine. Explain yes. why that is so critical in your view. Well, it's absolutely critical because you got to have U.S. and NATO expertise on the ground to be able to train them on how to use this equipment. They don't know. They're smart, resourceful, industrious people, but we've got to train them. They got to have the repair parts. Now we've got 800. <laughs> yeah, crime of the. So we need contractors. By contractors, they mean mercenaries, or actually, isn't it most of U.S. military right now that's across the world are contractors? Yeah, they're in, what, 139 different countries. I don't know how many bases there are in the world. And it's supposed to be money for your defense, but they're on the offense. They're, they're the uh, unofficial police force of the world. But now they've become bullies. And I could tell you now, Russia will not allow themselves to be bullied. Okay, they're making a stand. And with all the West... The, the the globalists in the West making the countries send weapons to Ukraine. You also have China being threatened by Blinken because they say, well, that's not fair. We're going to start helping out Russia in this war. And then Blinken, the American, has enough audacity to warn them. To, to, to warn them, uh, uh, you know, you better not start sending weapons and, to Russia. So I, this is pretty one-sided. Yeah, we've got a clip on this. Let's watch this for a minute. Presidents Biden and Duda are talking about the possibility of increasing U.S. troop presence here in Poland because the Polish are concerned that Russia, possibly with Chinese help, could take over Ukraine and then keep going. Oh, I was here last year and we visited uh, the base where Polish and American troops were and uh, standing side by side, showing our strength and determination. The truth of the matter is the United States needs Poland and NATO as much as NATO needs the United States. The China-Russia alliance is not some abstract foreign policy theory. The Chinese and Russian foreign ministers are meeting tomorrow in Moscow. And I think we do have concerns that China is considering providing military assistance to Russia. Uh, we obviously saw Russia and China announce a no-holds partnership about a year ago uh, and obviously have concerns about China continuing to bolster Russia as they're continuing to prosecute this war. At the same time, Russia is... You know, it's a strange thing. When Trump was in charge in America... Any wars that were going ended. There was no threat of any other wars. Everything was peaceful. It's been two years since uh, the, the resident Biden at the White House has taken control. And we have potential for war everywhere. North Korea, Japan, China, obviously, uh, Ukraine, Belarus, Moldova, Poland. 
are they are they laying the ground with this whole Polish thing? Are they laying the ground for like uh, I don't know, like the same thing they did with Ukraine? Uh, how they oh the uh, you know they're bringing more weapons into the Pol Poland right now to trigger another conflict. Now she's trying to really pull NATO into this officially. What I'm hoping for is that the the Western elites, the globalists, are being challenged by a new group of good globalists. And this is not going to go much further than where it is already, which is already bad. But they cannot ignore the fact that Russia... This is going to lead us into the next financial crisis. And there's no way out of this. That's why they're, the central banks are trying to cover it up any way they can, whether it be through uh, proxy wars, through uh, big uh, train explosions in Ohio, whether it be the media uh, dividing people up even more and focusing on, on confrontations at the micro level in North America between uh, groups of people, uh, nationalities, religious beliefs. It's all coming to a head. And it's going to get a lot worse. You're going to see a lot more things because we are coming closer to the end of this monetary system. And the switch over is going to be a little bit difficult. It's going to be a lot of difficult, especially for people in the West who've had it so easy for so long. You know, they get a, a, a little paper cut and they're crying. You're talking about, they're talking about Biden being the leader. And we just watched him there. Did that look like a strong leader to you? The man looks like he's half in the ground already. Exactly, but you now you're being a little bit of misogynist and racist and ageist and everything else. No, I'm a realist. <laughs> and if people don't like to take something, that's I have positive intentions. And if you turn a positive intention into a negative intention to fit your narrative... That's your business. You're allowed to do that. But I can tell you my, attention, my, my intentions are very positive and it's to help people to wake up to the realities of what's really going on. Not this uh, clown news network show we're watching on television all the time. Well, speaking about reality, um, if we focus on Russia and Ukraine conflict the way they want, us to, the way they want it to sell it to us, and I mean, like, it's the war between uh, Russia and Ukraine. Russia is expansionist. You know, there's the dictatorship and they come in for Ukraine because well, whatever the reasons that they least. Uh, but it's, it's bigger, like you said. Would it be banks? But I think it's also the whole Western ideology that's been pushed on us recently. And most of the people here don't agree with that. And actually Putin brought up in the speech, let's, let's listen to this. It's, uh, this is pretty inter interesting. It cannot ignore the fact that Russia cannot be defeated on the battlefield. So they're waging increasingly aggressive information attacks. First of all, targeting the young generations, lying on every step, distorting historical truth, attacking our culture, the Russian Orthodox Church, and uh, other traditional religious institutions in our country. Now look at what they're doing with their own peoples. They're destroying the institution of family, their cultural and historical identity, and uh, various perversions with regard to children up to pedophilia are accepted as uh, the new norm. And priests are forced to recognize and officiate same-sex weddings. People can live however they want, and uh, we in Russia have uh, never intruded into people's private life, and we're not going to do that. But what we want to say is maybe they should take a look in the scripture, into the holy book of any great religion. It says that the family is a union between woman and man. And uh, these holy texts are now being increasingly doubted in the West. The uh, Anglican Church is now considering the idea of a gender-neutral God. What can we say? God forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. 
Oh, he sounds homophobic, according to the people in the West. We're going to have to deplatform him. I, I actually got something to say about this. If they can deplatform Trump, they'd be able to deplatform de oh, him, de especially what he just said, right? Of course. Well, he, he is racist. He attacked Ukraine, and, you know, Ukraine's black. So the, uh, 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 the idea is the... Um, this is important. He brought up scripture, and he brought up God. Why is God being destroyed in the West right now? The way God was destroyed in the uh, Soviet Union or even uh, Nazi Germany. They had a special agreement with the church, the Nazis, by the way, uh, regarding this. Here, here's my point. They replaced, like when I grew up, Lenin became God and the uh, Communist Party in its manifesto became the scripture. We were studying this. Why? Because that was the authority to go to. That was the foundation of your existence. Now, if you have the th authority outside of the government, then people look elsewhere for guidance. They no longer submit to them uh, without questioning the government. Does that make sense? So uh, the, uh, the Western society being, uh, the gods being removed from the Western society for that reason, because now they're replacing the government with, uh, uh, that, that's the ultimate authority. The government has uh, uh, been taken over by a bunch of ideologues. And so that's, you're, you're watching the erosion of moral values. Because people, um, I remember a guy saying to me, yeah, but Glenn, you have to believe in something. When the government was telling him that he has to wear two masks and that he has to stay home and he has to take five spikes and he has to do this and he has to do that. And I said, you're going to have to be able to discern. I mean it's it's god first then it's man and the family values right so and you're supposed to have the god particle in each and every one of us so when you're looking to a higher order actually that order is inside of you so you have to look inside for it to bring out the resilience during tr uh, troubled times and it's quite obvious in the western culture here that the people are in troubled times I would, I would say the troubled times, I welcome the troubled times right now. You know why I welcome the troubled times? That's when we have a hope. It makes change. It makes change. It makes change specifically on the man's side. Man can only become man when they're uncomfortable. They can only grow with discomfort through tough times. You know, tough times make tough, them, tough men. Tough men make times easy. Make good times. Good times, right? Right. The way it's supposed to be. But these are the cycles, so we just have to revert back to it. Uh, we've had it too easy for too long. Uh, the average man in the West, their testosterone levels have been uh, really lowered. Their thought about masculinity has been misconstrued. And there's no more proper leadership. And I have to say, this is the reason why I find a lot of women are very unhappy today. And they actually even tell me that. They can't find a real man anymore. And I believe it's done intentional. I mean, maybe even like on the way where a real men are not aware. Uh, well, men, sorry, real men. Most men are not aware. It was a gradual slope where um, uh, the power was taken over, you know, from the men, from the family. And um, the men has been poisoned. Real men are aware. Real men always stay aware. Okay. They, they inherently know their position by nature in life. Right? The this reason is that making up excuses for for uh, other, you know, for weaker men so that they can fit in, how's that working out? It it it, it really isn't. Um, there's a scientific explanation for why men are weak nowadays, and actually, you can okay. No, it's sort of it's self sorry. It's self evident the weakness of the men. It's self-evident. Let's listen to this guy. This is a TikTok video that somebody sent it to me. Maybe another missus sent it to me. Let me let, let me put this up for you. The reason that there is such a void of male role models for young men is because we literally do not have adult males in our population anymore. But what do I, what do I mean by that? There's no adult males. Like there's grown men everywhere, but they're not actually physiologically adult human males. They're men not. child. I'm going to teach you guys some fun shit. So in uh, biology, there's this thing called neoteny. It's essentially 
an organism will retain juvenile traits as it ages if it doesn't get stressed out enough, okay? If you live in an environment that's too, like, easy, you don't actually develop adult characteristics. I noticed this when I was in high school. I grew up in a very affluent area. And when we went to our grad night, it was at Disneyland. And we went with a bunch of inner city schools. And everyone I was with realized that all of these kids looked like adults. They looked so much older than us. It's, yeah, because they were in a more st stressful environment, which caused their adrenal glands to upregulate, which caused higher testosterone levels, which made them literally adults. It made them adults in a way that we were still juvenile. Every organism has multiple phenotypes it can have, all right? Your phenotype's dictated by your genes, but what dictates which genes get expressed is your environment. The best example of this is pigs. So domesticated pigs, the pink ones that you all know and love, that's, that's one phenotype. It's not even their healthy phenotype. You take a, a domesticated pig, you release it into the wild. After six months, you have a feral boar that has grown thick, curly hair and tusks. Why? Well, being in the stressful environment causes its adrenal glands to upregulate, increasing testosterone production, causing it to take on a different phenotype of a boar. Another example of this is with wolves and foxes. If you start to breed wolves and foxes and you select for more passive traits, their adrenal glands get smaller. As their adrenal glands get smaller, they develop floppy ears, curly hair, and spots, all things we find in domesticated dogs. All right, it's all based off the, off the adrenal glands. Look at the population right now of adult men. What do we got? Men have never been fatter with lower testosterone. Men have never been fatter with lower testosterone. Those are both juvenile characteristics. It's because they're domesticated. Most people are domesticated. So why do men have all these juvenile characteristics? It's because people are domesticated animals now. Most human beings are domesticated animals, especially if you live in the United States. A domesticated animal is an animal fed by humans, taken care of by humans in order to get economic gain from them. What do you fucking idiots do all day? You just consume. Consume media, consume pills, consume food. You are domesticated livestock, and then you use your free time to then generate more labor and wealth for rich people. You're domesticated animals. The reason young men have no one to look up to is because a little piglet wouldn't look up to a pig. It wants to be a fucking boar. And all it sees around it, it's pigs. And it's like, I don't feel that in my heart. I feel like I'm a boar in here, but I have all these pigs in charge telling me that don't worry, I'm definitely a piggy. Kudos to you, man. It looks like you know what you're talking about. And now we see a picture of uh, Putin. Uh, th this picture was taken a couple of years ago. I think he was around 65 years old. He looks like he's had a tough life. He looks like he can defend himself. And uh, he's a proper leader of a nation that's being challenged right now. In the picture, even... Even the horse looks a little bit afraid of him. Well, he is a black belt in Sambo. He's a KGB agent. He knows how to shoot. He knows, he knows many of traits. And I think him being trained in this multiple art of war, because it is an art of war he's been trained in, right? And he's really good at it. Putin um, versus Biden. I think the biggest difference, Biden was trained in the art of politics, like how to say the right thing to the right people. Uh, where Putin's been trained, uh, say less, play chess. <laughs> I don't know. We should trademark say less, play chess. And I think that's where he's at uh, in in relation to the Western world. He's playing chess, where uh, the Western world is still playing checker politics. And that, that's my best analysis. But again, I still believe it's done intentionally. I still believe that the Western world is being destroyed uh, via war, and now there's a power shift. Who knows? What if, uh, Glenn, what do you think? What if Putin is part of the so-called so reset game and he's actually, um, he's part of the game, if you know what I mean? Is that... Well, maybe the game is at such a high level that, you know, nobody really, really knows except the few players way at the top. But even if he is part of the reset, the common denominator of everything we're talking about is the reset. It's, it, it's, it's a change. And many countries are, have been preparing for this reset for a long time. They're telling their citizens, their central banks are acquiring a lot of gold. They're telling their citizens to acquire gold, silver, stay out of debt, you know. Uh, but in the West here, no, no, we, we play Bitcoin and checkers and, you know, like, because uh, we've had it so easy for so long that uh, we don't know what to do. And on the Mrs. things, Josara Nasara is going to happen like eminently, like any any moment now. And then like your debt will be forgiven and you'll 
you'll be given your um, uh, endowment, so to speak, to um, do things that you love, not not continuously being a slave to the system. Yeah, I don't I don't perceive it that way. Do you think like worst case scenario and all this scariness with the World War Three and World War Three will not be a conventional war? There'll be a nuclear war, and there's a lot of talks now. Well, the you know the Russia and U.S. pulled out both out of the treaties. Uh, North Korea shooting missiles, and now they're all going to start testing nuclear weapons, and all the fleets and all the rockets are in order. And like, uh, should we continuously to be afraid? <laughs> is that is that is nuclear war imminent? And maybe that's the reset they're talking about because that will reset the Earth for a few years, if you know what I mean. Yeah, but I I couldn't imagine a conventional war with the uh, the, the 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 men here in the West. Uh, you know, I'd be on the front lines uh, b- beside some guy who's got nail polish on. Uh, you know, I'd probably look around and maybe shoot him first to give myself more of a chance. You know. Well, it's like they say, right? When you're in the woods and you encounter the bear, you don't have to outrun the bear. You just got to outrun the guy next to you, right? Yeah. And how allegorical is that? You know, Russian bear. And you don't have to, that's exactly what you just said. You know, the guy next to you, that's all you're going to, and you're going to switch sides. You're going to crawl to the other side. The Russian bear and the Western wussy. You know what a wussy is? It's a a, a cross between a wimp and a sissy. He's a wussy. And that's what we, a, a lot of our people on the front lines, they would be wussies. They would be the first ones to turtle. Well, did you see, oh, I got to pull this up. Uh, they, they did the comparison uh, recruiting uh, the army recruitment video between the U.S. and uh, Russia, where Russia shows like uh, pretty rigorous training for the men, uh, for the young men. They go for uh, really crazy stuff. And then um, the U.S. recruitment was uh, about a girl, a woman being raised by uh, two uh, uh, lesbian women. And she's <laughs> reminiscing on how strong she is being raised by women that are so brave. And that's who they're recruiting, and that's that's literally like this is this is who you're gonna send the, to the trenches against the Russian bear. So there's no conventional war. I believe you're right. That's all a spoof. This is something. Uh, the agenda is beyond that. If there is a war, it's not going to be conventional. It'll be nuclear war. And is that even worth talking about it at this point? Well, that would the, the, there's a, an ideology by these. Uh... Uh, bad globalists, there's evil globalists that they want to bring the population from 8 billion down to 500 million through uh, fake scandemics and the uh, all the darts that people are taking, the horrible food chain, the food supply, um, the, the potential for a nuclear war everywhere in many countries at the same time. That would bring the population down rather quickly. And especially with the aging demographics and many most of the first world populations and young people uh, having less children than they used to in the family. A lot of young people don't want to get married or don't want to uh, have children. It's, it's uh, Life is about the experiences. This and famous Guidestones no longer standing tonight after the I just, uh, sorry, I cut you off on this one. Let's, let's, this is, this was always puzzling to me. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't get this. Until today, the Guidestones. Georgia Guidestones. For decades near Elberton. This is close to the South Carolina state line. Now the GBI is trying to figure out who set off those explosives. 11 Alive's Don White was there earlier this evening. Several of those structures were standing until just about an hour ago. That's when we looked out the window and we saw that backhoe down there pushing them down. All that remains is that pile of mangled stone. Police tape lines this field in rural eastern Georgia surrounding the. All right, I got a lot to say about this. I just want to say that I believe that the good elites are winning. It's not apparent. Uh, but sometimes I see so- signals and signs that, ah, we're winning the battle. The good is going to win. The evil has found itself, got itself into many places, powerful positions, but the good always wins. And now I see that the good is coming up to win once again. It is suspect, though, right, Georgia Guidestones? Okay, so there was an explosion. 
uh, they won't. It's I don't think they're public lands, but I think they are. They no, it was, sta- it, that was a land that was bought a, a long time ago by a wealthy person, and they asked why did he buy it, and he said, "Oh, just just to hold it." Just to hold it, but uh, it, but I think it was still uh, government supervised, right? Government somehow uh, con- government control, but even though it's a private land, um, here's the thing, right? So Georgia Guidestones had those instructions on how to live in balance in this world, right? You're saying like uh, depopulate the earth to uh, 500 uh, million people. They didn't say how to how to actually do. It. They didn't give instructions how, on how to depopulate the earth, but there was this. Here's, here's what's puzzling. Here's that's a conspiracy, right? So it's an explosive, right? It's an, a pretty strong explosive to bring down those concrete structures, right? It wasn't your regular firecracker, you know, or uh, your fireworks stuff that you bought at the side of the road. No, that was a pretty major explosive all on the government control end. So, you know, if something IUD, right, improvised explosive device, uh, device is used anywhere on uh, U.S. soil, or even if it's used somewhere like, I don't know, in Iraq, they would bring the whole team of forensics, corner off everything, and dissect the place, take all the uh, possible evidence of that to determine, you know, what happens here? They bring down the uh, stones the next day. <laughs> like, where's the evidence? Like what, what, what? That's why I tend to agree with you that something's going on here beyond this. Because wouldn't you, uh, you know, cordon off and uh, uh, do more investigating on what's actually happened there? Um, you know, specifically, this is the crime scene, and not just a crime scene. This is the crime scene where explosives have been used on the on the U.S. soil. So potentially, it's some kind of terrorist threat because now you know the right wingers they consider to be the terrorist domestic terrorist so wouldn't you uh, investigate domestic terrorist isn't that wouldn't be the purpose of this instead they're bringing this down the next day it's sort of like um, 9 11 right <laughs> how quickly they cleaned up the rabble how quickly that was gone to remove all the evidence from the site to associate it with the actual explosives if uh, you know that melted the steel you know and uh, all that stuff so that seems to me exactly the same thing, like removing of the evidence. They also they supposedly uh, supposed to be a time capsule underneath all that. Um, they never found anything, you know. They never found anything. So I don't know. Uh, a crazy time we're living in. Um, There's covert operations. I believe that certain bad elites have been taken out. Uh, we're just led to believe that uh, many people in Hollywood are still having a normal life. Um, many people in the mainstream media, it's, it's, they seem to be switching allegiances also. Uh, the mainstream media, uh, the actual channels themselves seem to be switching allegiances, um, admitting mistakes that they made. Um, we're going to see in, in March where Congress is calling the CEOs and the leaders of a lot of the social media companies who were hiding the expert evidence from experts on the right. So we were only being subjected to the experts, expert point of view on, on the left. And now we're going to start hearing about experts on the right too. What we need is somebody to be the expert for the experts. That's that's a good point. Uh, every time you, you hear the word expert, it's like, oh, who's he working for? <laughs> you know, who is he peddling? Um, that's been a great show. It's been a quick review of what's going on in the world today. And I'm happy to see you, Glenn, that cheerful self and healthy self. And uh, our last message for the man, uh, you know, on this beautiful Tuesday morning. Men. Go back to the way nature intended. Level up as a man. Learn how. If you haven't had the proper guidance, there's a lot of channels out there that'll give you a little bit of a guidance, a little bit of headway. Uh, don't follow what the media wants you to believe. Discern the truth from the fake, phony, and false. And um, you can bet that tough times are coming, and you're going to learn a lot about your character. You learn nothing about a a person's character during easy times, 
But during tough times, you'll see who were the real deal and who were the fake phony and false. And they just drop by and they maybe take a bunch of uh, pills and uh, their depressants and then they become alcoholics and, and, and drugs and because they just they, they, they can't take it. Their uh, little bubble has been burst and now they're exposed. That's a good point. Toughen up now before it's too late. Go to the gym. If you say, oh, I'm so tired after work, I can't go to the gym. Get up earlier. Get up earlier and meditate. Eat something healthy. Go to the gym. Accomplish something that morning. And you say, well, it's not, you know, I don't have strength. I didn't get much sleep. Get tougher. This is the time when you man up. We cannot wait for you. We cannot afford to wait for you to man up. It's either now or never. Either you're with us or you're just somehow existing. You're not living. Discipline. Eat better. Exercise better. Be a better father. Be a better husband. Be a man. I love you, brothers and sisters. I'll see you in the next one.